Oh, mate, you're idling. This is sick. All right. We still have a ton to do. This is cool. Ready? Watch this. What's that sound? Who the fuck are you? We're going to finally do this video because it has been way too long. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. This is the Holly EFI review. I have had a Holly Sniper 2300 EFI in this car for close to 12 months now. Holy shit. I've done about 10,000 Ks on the fucking thing and we are going to review it because it's been up and down. I'm not going to lie, but it's not entirely its fault. It's kind of my fault, kind of the car's fault. There's a lot, a lot of people to blame here. Mainly me. That's not the fucking point. Stick around because I've got a few interesting things to say. I need some tape though because you're going to fall over as I drive. All right, we're off. Really dooly. So the Holly Sniper 2300 EFI. Uh, how, if I had to summarize how this, this modification went, and, and, and still is going, it's definitely a love-hate relationship. I'm not gonna lie. It's, uh, it's been with its ups and downs. I've had a lot of problems with it, um, but it's given me a lot of comfort and success and com you know confidence in the car. So the cost. So front to back, this install cost me about three thousand uh, dollars. You know, could I find three grand to spend somewhere else? Definitely. I reckon you you could spend money better. But you know, if you really wanted to keep the car classic, the original engine, um, keep these cars for what they are, which I think is a great idea. Uh, this is definitely a good move. You know, doing away with the crappy carburetor, choke cables, all that kind of stuff. This is a solid decision. Even if you don't have a Land Cruiser, you're just looking for a Holly, Holly Sniper, you may do it. It's a good idea. If you're looking to gain power or create a performance car, it's not for you. Like if you've got like an old six and you're thinking you're gonna add a lot of power, you're not. Power, I don't think it's gonna be any different. I did say I was gonna put a dyno, or well, put this thing on a dyno. I, I'm not gonna now. It's, it's not worth it. It's too expensive to put it on a dyno. And I don't think I've got that much monumental difference in power. So it's definitely not gonna happen. When it comes to installing the Holly Sniper, it was pretty difficult, I'm not gonna lie. It definitely challenged me, who's not a mechanic. Uh, if you're a mechanic, this is easy. It's all bolt-in stuff. Um, but having, uh, having the need to have specific tools, especially when it comes to tapping threads in uh, your exhaust and your coolant and the likes of that stuff, it's pretty complex. Um, so if you don't have a reasonable understanding of engines, I don't know if this is for you. I, I took a risk, right? And I probably lent on a few friends to try and get this over the line. And I did, obviously, and it was difficult, but I'm glad I did it. Um, on a scale of one to 10, this difficulty is definitely up there at like a seven, you know, a seven or an eight even. If you said an engine swap was like 10 out of 10 difficulty, this thing's like a seven. I think a seven. Seven is good. What did the install come with? What did it not come with? So it comes with everything that you need, quote unquote, but it doesn't come with a lot of things. So it doesn't come with anything from the air box or, you know, from the air to the carburetor. So everything from like snorkel, air box, connectors, adapters, everything to meet the holly. My friend David made me a custom box that sort of went from the uh, air filter box uh, into the top of the carb hat. And that was really great. Without that, I'd be in a lot of trouble. And I was, because I'll show you some footage. Oh no! That is me flooding my car because I didn't have an air box on it at the time. Uh, I know I ram railed that water hole pretty significantly. I can't talk properly anymore. But it definitely doesn't come with that stuff. The other big thing that it doesn't come with is the throttle cable. Um, now I had to do some creative thinking around my throttle cable. I ended up having to pull a cable off a Land Rover Discovery and use that because it was long enough because the way the rotation of the carburetor was, the throttle cable went from rotating this way to rotating that way and it became very different. And I needed a longer cable, I had to make my own bracket up. It's a whole video series on this, by the way. 
the only thing I did have to do with the gearbox and transmission kick down cable is that instead of running it to the carburetor because it was, wasn't long enough now, I circled it back around to the foot pedal, which was really good. Um, basically does the same thing and I didn't have to shorten it, which was really great. So it just sits in the, uh, sits in the box in the engine bay and it works, works a treat, mate. So in the 12 months of having it, I've not been blown away with it. And the reason is, probably more my fault and probably more the fact that this car has a lot or had a lot of mechanical problems when I did the conversion. So I got the car running fine in the end, which was great, but then it unearths a lot of problems. So I think I had a manifold leak for a long time. That was a big problem. Then I had a timing issue and what was happening was the computer inside the Holy Sniper was trying to over correct for bad timing and it was causing these revving fluctuations in the car to stall out and uh, it was causing flat spots in the acceleration all, all sorts of trouble so especially because this car went from uh, being on gas to not being on gas to now having the holly efi i definitely had to do the timing again and i got it wrong a few times um, that being said the throttle position sensor packed up on me about six months into owning it so i already had to replace the throttle position sensor um, which is funnily enough the standard one that's used on like a holden ve so that was only a ten dollar part but beside the point what was happening was the throttle position sensor was being stuck at wide open throttle or at like 90 percent um, and that was causing the injectors to shut off thinking that the engine was flooded so i, I had that problem to deal with um, the other thing was the exhaust mount the the over the uh, over the exhaust clamp style o2 sensor adapter that it comes with is pretty crap uh, mine leaked right from the day dot if, because it's got a predetermined radius on the on the clamp and if that's not the same size as your exhaust you're gonna get a leak and mine leaked so i ended up having to weld my own one in that fixed the vacuum leak as well uh, since then it's been running well so they're probably the bad things the good things are like fuel economy has gone up a heap. The added reliability of this car has gone up tenfold. I'm really happy with like how this car operates and just day to day runs. Um, in the bush, I get some reservations. So knocking the car around like you would a four wheel drive, it's not meant for that. And, and that's probably something I should have thought about before doing it. The car really shouldn't have this if it's a four wheel drive. Uh, if you're going to daily drive this car off, on the road, kick back, maybe do a little bit of touring, but nothing serious for wheel driving, um, yeah, this is probably a good good match. But I had cables come loose. I had um, my, my ECU screen, display screen, that failed on me because a cable came loose. Um, there was just lots of things like that. And the problem is that you've got such complex computer technology inside such an old car that any little indiscretion any little fault that the engine or the car might have triggers uh, a chain reaction of problems that the car or the ECU can then try to determine what's going on and it can cause a lot of, a lot of issues so um, I think if you know you have a solid rock solid running car that's, that's right to go, 100%, this is a great idea. You just do the swap, it's all good. You'll get a couple of gremlins, no doubt, but you move on, you get them done, happy days. So if I had to wrap up this video and say like, would I recommend the Holly Sniper EFI for your car? Um, for a four wheel drive, it's a no. I don't think it's the best option. And I say this with full intention that I would sell the car with this and I would say like this is a great thing like the car runs amazing there, there is no two questions about how this car runs but it's just one more thing for you to fault find in the bush and i guess that whole thing of like why well, you wouldn't want to mix match products or source random engines from overseas or or build cars that are a little out of the ordinary when it comes to four wheel drives because when you go out of the bush and something goes wrong and you need to do something or fix something guess what you're stuck and that's kind of the fear that I have with this car. Not that I think that the Holly is going to cause me a lot of issues long term, but knowing the throttle position sensor already failed and a few other bits already failed makes me wonder like the rugged, the, 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 the capacity for longevity with this thing, I just don't know. And I feel like 
maybe the car needs an engine swap beforehand. I think I needed to do an engine swap. And if I said, look, three grand gets me this and it's a lot better than what it was. I got better fuel economy, um, all sorts of stuff. Then 10 grand probably get me something even better, but I would get so much more value on my return from doing an engine swap. So that was my take on it. Um, but I don't regret doing it. This is, it's a wicked car still. And there is something to be said about having the original engine still. I, I really like that it still has the original engine and I think that's, um, that's something to consider. You know, if you if you want to keep your cars classic, I know there's a guy who's got, oh, I can never remember his handle, Turvy 76, something like that. He's got a 76 and he's got a 60 series. If you know who you are, you know who you are. You're an awesome dude. He built this sick ass like rear bar. Anyway, um, he's got a really clean 60 series and um, I think that this would be a great option because I know that that car's never gonna go off-road, go bush bashing, um, but you want something that maybe gives it a little bit more dynamic feel when driving and a little bit, you know, an interview more reliability and power and this, that, and the other. Wow, what a great decision to use the Holly Sniper to upgrade your car. Um, outside of that, if you didn't have a four-wheel drive and you had just had like a road car, like a, a Mustang or, a, or whatever, an old carby car, or even an old Holden, spot on idea, mate. You know, it's Holly. You can't go wrong with Holly. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm happy to answer everything. I could talk about the Holly for ages. Uh, it, it really is a complex machine that I know very little about uh, on the inside. I've done a little bit of tinkering uh, with, the, with the electronics and the timing and stuff, but with the car not having timing control, um, because I'm still running a standard distributor, even though I've got the, um, the electric distributor upgrade in it, um, there is there's a, there's a, so much cap, capacity for what you can do. Um, they take turbos as well, because that might happen. Um, they're great carbies, you know, I, I can't knock it. Anyway, I am going to go. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I would love to answer as much as I can. All right, bye.